Good morning. Welcome to St. Paul's Lutheran Church and our worship service for this first Sunday in Advent. We begin with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Amen. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear this glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven and you are free, free from all that holds you back and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love comforted by Christ's peace and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We praise you, O God, for this evergreen crown that marks our days of preparation for Christ's advent. As we light the first candle on this wreath, rouse us from sleep, that we may be ready to greet our Lord when he comes with all the saints and angels. Enlighten us with your grace and prepare our hearts to welcome him with joy. Grant this through Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain and whose day draws near. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sins and keep us blameless until the coming of your new day. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. Our first reading for this first Sunday in Advent is from the 64th chapter of the book of the prophet Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you are angry and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We've all become like one who is unclean and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, 
and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our father. We are the clay and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O oh Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. Here ends the first reading. Our psalm is from Psalm 80. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock. Shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine upon us and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you, your anger fume when your people pray? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors, and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. Let your hand be upon us the one at your right hand, the one you have made so strong for yourself. And so will we never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us and we shall be saved. This is our psalm. The second reading is from the first chapter of Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Here ends the second reading. Please stand for the reading of the Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 13th chapter. Jesus said, In those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree take its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, 
for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cock crow, or at dawn, or else he may, he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. About that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. When will the ending come? When will be the end of time? When will the Son of Man come again and the earth be judged? In the early years of the church, in those first years and decades after Jesus' death and resurrection, the Christian community expected Jesus to come back at any time. You can see this even a few decades after Jesus' death and resurrection. You can see it in the letters of Paul. And even here in the Gospel of Mark, from somewhere about 30 or 40 years after Jesus' death and resurrection. The Christian community was expecting Jesus to come back at any time. With the angels of heaven and the end of the world, the end of time to be at hand. Now, some 2,000 years later, We don't have that same expectation. Certainly not in the same way. We expect the world to go on day after day and year after year. Perhaps there'll be an ending sometime, but it's not now. Even with the year 2020 and all that it's brought, we don't really expect the end. We expect that 2021 will come and we hope that it'll be better than this year. We expect that after that 2022 will come and 23 and 24 and so on. We don't expect Jesus to come right away. We often think of that, I guess I often think of that more as metaphorical, that the end will one day come, that my end will one day come. But I don't have to be looking for it every day or prepared for it all the time. And that may be right. After all, the Christian church has been around for nearly 2,000 years, and we're still going. The end hasn't come yet. But I think what our reading tells us today is something we should still keep in mind. Keep awake, be alert. It's like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home, he puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, commands the doorkeeper to be on watch. 
We are the servants. We have each been given our work. It's our job to do that work. Not to worry about, in the words of the parable, when the master will return, but simply to do the work that we've been commanded to do and not really concern ourselves with the end time, with what the master is doing and what might delay him or bring him back sooner. It's our job to do the work that we've been commanded. And so that's what we're called to do. That's what it means when it says to keep awake and keep alert. To continue doing what God has called you to do. For me to continue doing what God has called me to do. And we might not always know if it's very much or just what the results are of what we do. We may not know what seeds we're planting in the world, but we're called to scatter the seeds of God's love and God's word and let them grow as they will. I'm recording this service right now And it turns out I'm the only one here. We gave our musicians the week off because there is a possible COVID exposure. So I'm doing this on my own. I assume that you're watching it. And I assume that as I preach, you're listening not just to what I say, but you're listening to what God might be speaking to you through whatever words I'm using. I expect that the Holy Spirit is active somehow in this interchange between us. Me speaking to a camera in an empty sanctuary on a Wednesday afternoon and you at home maybe on Sunday morning maybe on Sunday afternoon or evening or maybe another day entirely watching this and that in my words and in our exchange God is present and in fact, I'm not here alone in the sanctuary. But the Holy Spirit is present with me. And you are not at home alone or with whomever you live with. But the Holy Spirit is with you as well. You see, the parable is about God coming into the world, about the master of the house coming back, and us looking and waiting for the master to come back. Perhaps in the history of the Christian church, and even with those early Christians, we got it wrong. It wasn't so much about waiting for Jesus to come back one day and judge the world. It was about the Holy Spirit coming into our lives each and every day. Keep awake and be alert because God is coming into your life. Jesus is coming again. Not just at the end, although we do look forward to that. But Jesus is coming here and now into your life today. 
into your life through this worship service, into your life through the reading of the scriptures, into your life through all sorts of ways that only the Holy Spirit is aware of, but that you might see also if you open your eyes and look with faith. To see God coming to you in a neighbor or a child or your spouse. To see God coming to you and God going to others through you and your love for them. Keep awake and be alert and do what God has called you to do because the Holy Spirit is with you. The Holy Spirit is moving in your life and Jesus is coming again today and tomorrow and the next day Jesus is coming. And we as Jesus people are called to do the work which we have been called to. As an example of this, this has to do with a newsletter article I just wrote. Here at St. Paul's, a year ago we were afraid. We were worried. We didn't have much hope. It was all about church finances and the budget. We worked ourselves up into a worry about the future of our church and if we could continue to support our congregation, continue to pay a pastor, continue to do what we had been called to do and be St. Paul's Lutheran Church here in Waterloo. This year we don't have any of those fears. We don't have any of those anxieties. We've got all sorts of other anxieties about COVID and whatnot, but not those fears about our finances. And the reason we don't is because of us. Because God has been with us and has called us to do what we've been called to do. It's like a man going on a journey and when he leaves home he puts his slaves in charge. And we've been put in charge of this congregation. And what's happened over the last year and a little more is that we've woken up. We've woken up to the fact of our calling to support the ministry of St. Paul's, to support the finances of St. Paul's. And we've done that. You've done that. We've grown in our giving over the last couple of years by over $35,000 to support our ministry every year. That's because we've got some members who've grown in their giving by a lot because they were able to do so and they heard that call and they answered it in faith. And we have some members who've grown in their giving a little bit. Not as much as some, but they've grown in their giving because they've heard the call and answered it in faith. We have other members who haven't been able to give as much, maybe who've decreased their giving as their circumstances have changed in their lives. But overall, we've heard the call and we've seen that God is indeed with us and has indeed provided for us. And that together, along with God, we are much stronger as a congregation than we had feared we were. 
a year ago. But the fears we faced a year ago are now gone. Because we have known that Jesus is with us and have answered the call to do as we have been commanded to be the people of St. Paul's Lutheran Church to allow this ministry to continue. The last couple of days I've been driving around and dropping off some children's Bibles for some of our younger students. We can do this because we've given to the ministry of St. Paul's a year ago, we would have been too afraid to buy that many Bibles, children's story Bibles for the kids. But this year we can do it because we're not afraid. And we know that Jesus is with us. Jesus is indeed coming into your life and into my life. Jesus is coming today and tomorrow and every day. So keep alert. Stay awake. And do the work that you have been commanded to do. For our Master comes today and every day. Amen. Let us confess together our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. God of power and might, tear open the heavens and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. We pray for the ministry we share in Christ's name. Open our hearts to your call for justice, peace, and healing. Attune us to the needs of the world as you draw near. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for this planet in need of restoration, for devastated habitats, polluted waters, thawing ice, blazing fires, swelling floods, and long-lasting droughts. Renew the face of the earth and our relationship to it. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all people who care for others in our community and around the world. Fill them with compassion and the power to respond with justice for those who are oppressed, with welcome for those who are excluded, and with relief for those who suffer. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for people who are in crisis as the seasons change, for those without homes facing severe weather, for those who are unemployed or underemployed, and for those in poverty or facing food insecurity. Relieve their burdens, sustain their bodies, and ease their minds. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the people in our families and congregation who live with depression, anxiety, 
chronic pain, addiction, and other invisible illnesses. We, e we pray that you ease their suffering and support them when they struggle. We pray especially for those who have been diagnosed with COVID-19 and those who have been exposed to it. We pray that you bring healing to Jody. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We give thanks for the lives and witness of those who died while waiting for justice, peace, or healing. Those whose names we know and those whose names are, not, are known only by you. Sustain all who still yearn for the completion of your redeeming work. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray together as our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Creator of the stars, bless your advent waiting. The long-expected Savior, fill you with love the unexpected spirit guide your journey now and forever amen you may go in peace and prepare the way of the lord thanks be to god this concludes our service for this morning uh, we've taken a break from our in-person worship services on sunday mornings uh, due to an exposure to covid um, I'm not sure what we're going to be doing in December for our Sunday morning worship services, if we're going to return to in-person services or not. Uh, the council will be uh, getting together to make a decision on that soon. Um, I'm also not sure what we're doing for Christmas. I know we will have a pre-recorded service. I'm also thinking of perhaps some short services outside with candles and um, singing Silent Night together, uh, maybe in some short Bible readings, um, but that's still in the works and that's dependent on the weather. So um, we'll get you news on that in the coming weeks as well. Thank you for joining us this morning. God's blessings to you.